what Jesus said. I came to tell you what Jesus said. I came to tell you what Jesus said. Repent of your sins and be baptized. Repent of your sins and be baptized. Our God will fix it. That song has been slung down from the generations, but guess what? The truth is still the same. Amen. Amen. Jesus has been fixing it for a long time. He'll be fixing it for a long time to come. Amen. Amen. So boy, can't we put our faith and confidence in the fact that our God will fix that? Amen. Even if we need to face tomorrow, no matter what, we gotta go through it, but we gotta deal with it. Amen. Our God, we pray to people said, our God is what? Amen. Just as we being able, I can lift up my hands and say, thank you, Lord. Amen? For what's to come. Amen. How many got a testimony that we know where the Lord done brought us from? Uh, come on. How many of us can relate trouble in my way? Uh, I have to cry sometimes. But God. But God. Come on. But God. But God. Amen. He always steps in. He always makes a way. And for that, I am eternally grateful, amen, for the Lord has done and has continued to do. He's built his testimony in us every day. Amen. amen. It's not always an easy thing for God to build his testimony through us. But I tell you what, as he builds it, he will get the glory out of it and it will bless us. Amen. And this is not all a cross to bear. I mean, there is some suffering. Amen. But we are, our mind is on what? Eternity. Amen. Amen. These temporary blessings on earth, they're good while we're here. But one day we got to leave here. The ultimate question of life is where are you going to spend eternity? Amen. We will have all would answer that question one day. But I'm taking a test every day. Amen. So we thank him today for allowing us to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. Before I go into my message today, I do extend a welcome to all of us here. All of you that are viewing through uh, Zoom on today, we welcome you as well. Uh, I did a couple of announcements I do want to get out before I start. Uh, remember, um, maybe a month, month and a half, about a month and a half ago, uh, when we had baptism here, and one of the main people that was had requested to be baptized was a 92-year-old lady named Lydia Fry. The, uh, church or belief that she was in, they didn't believe in baptism, but she wanted to be baptized. Uh, she said she wanted to be baptized before she got there, so we had set up, we had set up to baptize her as well as uh, a few other people as well, and she had a son that was in Florida, and a couple of days, the week before, the baptism on that Saturday, she went to visit her son, and while she was down there, she was, it was getting ready to load the car and everything to come back on that Friday, because we were baptized on that Saturday, she fell. And she broke her ribs, I think five or six ribs, she uh, broke her wrist, and there's a couple other things went on, and so she was not able to come. And she been in the hospital for weeks and weeks and had a rehabilitation. And before she went, she had been suffering a lot with congestive heart failure. But to make a long story short, you know, we had, you know, we was all excited about the very fact, and we had sent word to her that when she do get back, we gonna get that, we gonna make that happen. For that. We gotta bring the pool to her. We were gonna make it happen. Amen. But Amen. to make a long story short, uh, her name was Lillian Friday, and man, and she passed on Monday night. You know, it just broke my heart to hear it, but God knows. He knows the intent of her heart as well as the intent of the Yes, but yes. the very fact that we know, you know, that's not a precedent where you go going to the kingdom because you're being physically baptized in water, but even heart desire. Yes. Yes. That's all the Lord needs. Yes. Her intent. Yes. He knew that our intent was to do it. Yes. But it's still hurt my heart. You know, but yes. Yes. you know, we give God glory. And I believe that's just one more soldier. The Lord blessed to live on this earth 92 years now. She's going to be with that's, I'm, that's my story. I'm going to stick to it. Amen. 
healing all the way through scripture, but there were very few times that he physically touched the people to heal them. You just read in this text here in Mark chapter 1 here, he touched this leper. In the same chapter, verse 31, he touched Peter's mother-in-law's hand and fever left her body. Matthew, the ninth chapter, verse 29, and Matthew 20 and 34, he touched two blind men's eyes and sight was restored. Mark 7, chapter, verse 33, he touched a deaf and dumb man. He put his finger in his ear and spit on his hand and touched his tongue. His hearing and speech was restored. Luke 7, 14, he touched the widow's only son's coffin and restored his life. Luke 22 and 51, his disciple cut off the ear of the high priest's servant, and Jesus picked it up and touched his ear, and it became whole again. But out of all of those that Jesus touched, the healing touch of this leper here, to me, is the most powerful of all of them. And why I say that, because you understand the history behind leprosy. Jewish leaders declared people with leprosy were unclean. They couldn't live in normal society. The law said that contact with an unclean person made you unclean. They had to keep a certain distance or they would be stoned. They even had to wear a certain kind of garment. And when somebody would come around, they'd be hard out. I am unclean, unclean to make sure you stay back. <laughs> what sounds so familiar, don't it? <laughs> Look at us right now, hey, everybody. Look at us. But the very fact of it is, you know, it was a distance, it was a separation. People were terrified of lepers. But the key is Jesus touched this leper anyway. No person, listen to this, no person is too disgusting for God to touch. Amen. Amen. Leprosy is symbolic of sin. We have all been deformed by the ugliness of sin because we're born in sin. But by sending his son, Jesus, God has touched us, given us the opportunity to be healed. Listen to this. We are all lepers touched by grace and the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. So we want God to touch everything but us. But when he touches us, He's touching everything else as well. What I'm saying about that statement is that when he do decide to touch, it impacts everything. You know, even though he might touch me here, but that, uh, that touch on, I could be blind, but that blindness of eye can also touch the blindness of my heart and soul. He knows how to touch us in a way that we can be healed spiritually and physically all in the same touch. Amen? But it's always his decision. He did many times when he didn't touch. But when he led to touch, if you follow every time he touched someone physically in the gospel, it had a lot of impact and a lot of different ways that he was going to be glorified through that as well. So this makes the Messiah's touch the touch that changes everything. Now we just sung the songs to really to, to really defend my case for that for that for that title. Amen. He's able, you know, uh, God can do no matter what we got. He's able to what, deliver us. He's able to fix it. Jesus can fix it. Trouble get in my way. People get in my way. Everything to get in my way. Jesus can what? Fix it. It's a statement. It's a true fact that we can base our faith and confidence on. And I'm going to tell you, in this day and time that we live in, every now and then, we all need a touch Amen. of God. Amen. It's essential sometimes that we need to have him touch us. And you know, we understand the way he touches now, it's not, it's not just a physical touch. He can touch us in any situation. Amen? Amen. There's nothing like the Messiah's touch. Now, I want to share this story. There's, I broke this down into six elements of the story that I want us to look at here. And the first one is, he is the Messiah. He said the Messiah's touch that changes everything. What makes him the Messiah? In this same chapter, starting matter of fact, in verse 15, his very first message 
that he was preaching was the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and be back and, be, and believe the gospel. This is the Messiah's first message. He's preaching kingdom doctrine. Man, this was Jesus' first message. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And really what he's talking about, I'm here. You know, we know that the kingdom's all based through him. We're saved through him. All the gospel is about Jesus Christ. I am here, but our part is I fulfill my part. I'm here. Guess what your part is? Repent. Amen. It's here. Repent for the king. Everything is, is being put in place. And eventually, before I get, when I get to the cross, I'm going to seal this deal that even the gates of hell can't prevail against. Him. Once I get up out of the grave, every, the victory is told in every aspect of it. Amen? Amen. So his first message. And then on that, the proof of his Messiah in verses 16 through 20, he began to call out his own disciples. He had the authority to call his disciples. And what he called in verse 17, he says, come you after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. That is the ultimate duty of every believer that come to Christ. We were called to be fishers of other men and women. Somebody said, what is my purpose? That is the number one purpose. The very thing that Jesus came to make us is, that is our first purpose. Everything else falls behind it. Amen? Everything we do, God gets his greatest glory when we bring in people into the kingdom. Amen? I know it takes effort, it takes a little sacrifice, it takes a little extra work out of us, but come on. It is our number one job to do the work of the Father. The gospel, then it be spread, the great commission. We can't get around that. I know it's good to have great church service. Now let's take it to the streets. Yeah. Now we're going to have good service together. Now let's take it to someone that wasn't here to hear. Now don't know. Let's go out and share what we already know. But he had the authority to call disciples. He going to give that to God, going to give that to Jesus. We don't have the authority to call people into the kingdom. We can invite him in. But he the one because he is the kingdom. He is the way. That the scripture said, the way, the one, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father. How? Except by him. He has that. God has given him delegated authority. Now, as a church, there is some delegated authority that we do have. But only Jesus can say that. Amen? So it's important that we that's what makes him the Messiah. And then the last one from verses 21 to 31, he had the authority and the power uh, over all spirits. Listen, how, listen, how, listen to the people in, in verse 21. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue and taught. Man, you know, he went away straight from his first business night in the synagogue teaching among us. God had all prepared this path and planned for him. And look what it says in verse 22. They were astonished at his doctrine. Well, he taught them as one that had authority. <laughs> as one, he do have authority. Amen. See, when you say as one, that means you got a little doubt. There. He do have authority. It was delegated from God. He had the authority to speak what he said. Yeah. In verse says, 23, and there in the synagogue, a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, let us alone. Automatically, the demon already recognizes authority. <laughs> the ones up there should have recognized complaining about it. You know, that's us in the church. Somebody say us. Oh. Well, the devil already, the demon didn't recognize who he was. He recognized his authority and he recognized who he was. His anointing that was on him, just like his disciple. When he called them, the scripture said, immediately they dropped their nets and they went to follow him. Why? Because they recognized his anointing. Are you hearing me? The only one that even said anything about Jesus was John the Baptist. He was the forerunner. He prepared the way for Christ to come. But the anointing was recognized in these disciples as well. And they followed him. I guarantee you that none of us, including me, as soon as I had the call of God, I didn't drop my nets immediately. Come on, and tell the truth about it. How many of you played with them nets for a long time? We procrastinated, we waited, I thought about it. Let me make sure the devil called me into this. It's all kind of crazy stuff. Very few people that needed it. They turned their life around and they followed him. 
There's nothing like recognizing the anointing of God. Amen? Amen. Not only in him, but on earth. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father. We have to recognize the anointing of his people now. Amen? Amen. So he has authority. Notice here the rest of the story says in verse 25, and Jesus rebuked him, saying, hold your peace and come out of him. <laughs> his authority that he was, he didn't even get him there, but just shut up and come out. He didn't have to, he didn't have to go, y'all go give me some oil, oh, let's get prayed up before we pray him out. God, not all of that stuff. He didn't spend two or three hours all night long wrestling with one devil. His authority was that he spoke it in one sentence. I remember I've heard people boast about, man, we wrestled that devil all night long before we finally got out. I'm glad he come out, but man, look at we must be doing something wrong if it take us all night long to do something that Jesus do in one sentence. Hold your peace and come out of him. And what happened in verse 26? And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. He obeyed. That's the authority and the power that Jesus had as the Messiah. Not only that, when he speaks to demons, they do come out. He don't, you've never seen Jesus speak at more than one line to a demon. Go, go find that way he spoke to a devil or a spirit in the scripture, and he never spoke. He didn't tell you. Know, he spoke and it was done. And every time he did do it, they recognized who he was. He, and, and look, guess who I am? I am Jesus Christ. He didn't even say that. I'm Daniel Hugo, pastor of every temple Christian. I've been saying that. Uh, no, he, he was just, just, just his presence. And he picked up on who he was. And when the unclean spirit heard him, they're going to 27. They were all looking. This, this is the people that should have been doing it from the get go. They were all amazed. And it must, they, they questioned among themselves, saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? But with authority, he commands and even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And it says immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region around Galilee. Again, they recognize his authority as the Messiah. Amen. They are, what the Messiah means, it means anointed one. Anointed is someone that has been empowered and sent by God. And when we are anointed to do something, what we are anointed to do is going to come to pass. Amen? Amen. Because we've been empowered for one thing, and also the key word, we have been sent. God has to send us. He don't empower us you know, to do something unless he first. He also wants to send us and equip us that we can do what he said and sent us to do. This is the Messiah. The results prove, again, that he was the Messiah. That's the first element of the story. The second one is the movement. In verses 32 through 39 here, as we just read, because of Jesus' authority and the Messiah power over devils and disease, this started a movement. When the writer says here in verse 37, all men seek him. Why do they seek him? Because they don't heard about what happened in the synagogue. And now here in verse 32, what did they do? They brought unto him all that were diseased. Can you imagine the multitude? They said, all that was diseased. Can you imagine if we brought all the people that were diseased right now and try to put them in one place? Not only diseased, and also them that were possessed with devils. How many of you know somebody possessed with a devil? Don't call no names. Just think about it. Can you imagine to try to put all the people that, are, that have been sick with disease in a, you know, in one place and bring them before the Lord. And what's so, what's so, what's he meant spectacular about it? Uh, they brought him to Simon's house. Look at verse twenty nine here. After this long week, they went with him. They came out of the synagogue. They entered into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's wife, she lay sick with fever. And and and, and Jesus went in verse thirty. He came and took her by the hand again. He touching her. He took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and then she ministered. Can you picture that in your mind? He gets to the house, she lay there in the fever, sick, and, and he go and lay hands on her, and she turned right back around and all night began to serve him. Wow. What do we do after we get healed? 
I know we boast about it. Hey, I got shit like he did this, he did that. But what did you do afterwards? Did we go serve God? Or did we go serve ourselves trying to catch up? But we done missed out on while we were sticking to bed. Yeah, yeah. Is my first reaction is to serve God. Is it to fall down and worship him? But look at her. He got her up. And she began to serve him. Heal to serve. Now, that, somebody need to write that down. Come on, heal to serve. That is what I approached her. And now all of a sudden, when the people saw, you know what, we love to jump on the bandwagon. Hey, man, that dude over there, man, everybody he touched, they get healed. Every time he speaks to a spirit in me, I'm going to get my cousin there, and everybody else I know that's sick and full of the kind of spirit that should be, I'm going to bring them there. And is that people? And is that Simon's house? Can you imagine that was your house? What kind of a crowd that it would be? And look at verse 33. And all the city was gathered together all at the door of this one house. Look out your window. The yard is full of sick and evil spirits. Boy, that's a perfect picture. That's a perfect atmosphere and setting for the church to let their light shine in. Amen. We should have an answer for the sick and also for those that are vexed with spirits. Come on, every spirit ain't got to be something you're looking at on the horror movie, walking around the head, not look like a living dead, walking dead, and all that kind of stuff. It has to be. And if, if I have the wrong spirit in me, I'm vexed with an evil spirit. Every one of us that had the wrong spirit of us from time to time. It might still have some of the traits in us right now. It just depends on whether we ring his doorbell and wake him or her up. <laughs> so it's, it's not. As long as we got a flesh, that can be a, that can be a, it's, you know, flesh and walk and spirit always in warfare. The Bible tells us that. But look at the verse 34. Somebody say, but God. <laughs> he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him not. The devil ain't got a time to I tell you, when Jesus is healing, it ain't time for the devil to be talking anyway. I hope y'all got that. There's a whole lot just in that statement. Isn't it? But notice what he said. They brought all the sick, all the disease, but what did Jesus do? He healed many. He did not say he healed all. Because everybody don't, don't have the faith to receive his healing or the faith to believe him that he can cast out. You know, we can defy. The only thing that ever stopped Jesus was unbelief and a lack of faith. Never convicted any Mary. He went to his, remember how he went back to his own town and ain't that Mary and Joseph boy and all that? This is the anointed one, the Messiah coming here. And he said that he could not do many miracles because of unbelief of the people. They couldn't get past him. I can relate to that. When I first started in ministry, I had a lot of folks, they couldn't get past Junior to even, even look at Pastor Hugh. That's how we do. And we a lot of us been given the same thing. Yeah, I know where you are now, but I remember where you was. But dude, we living in the now. <laughs> Amen. But this is what happened. But Jesus did it. And it says in the morning he rose up real early. After all of that, I can imagine that he was tired. What did he go and do? While before day he went out and departed into a solitary place. And what did Jesus go ahead and do? What did everybody about to say what? Pray. Even the Son of God prays. You know, there's a time that what he had to do, he need ministering to. He needs to be restored and to be prayed back. After all of that, come on, how many devils can we, can we uh, cast out? And how many sick can we lay hands on and God heal through us and it don't impact us? After all of this, Jesus needed a rest. Amen? Amen? And they did that. And he prayed. And guess what happened? They found him. <laughs> and they said unto him, all men seek. Which brings me to a, a, a very important crossroad. What do we really seek God for? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I see him. I see him casting out devils. But really, what are you seeking him for? Are for you seeking for the miracles? But what you just see? The sensationalism. To lay hands on the sick and they recover. You know, are you seeking him for him? Amen. 
Amen. Amen. We can call, you can get a crowd. I can do some stuff in the natural. You get a crowd, everybody will follow. But what are you following? He, when Jesus told them about when he had fed the 5,000, they followed him. They got his ships, fought him all the way across the water. And he finally turned around and said, look, what are you seeking? Are you seeking me for the loaves because your belly is full? Or are you seeking me for the miracles? That's the question. We're here today. Why are you seeking him? Why am I here today? We don't press through pandemic, the threat of all this stuff going on, but we can't. Why am I here? Am I seeking him for the right reason? Come on, that, that makes a lot of sense. A lot of people, one of the reasons we don't we stay married, because we married for the wrong reason. Why you want to say I do? That we got to tell them. Why you really want to say I do to me? <laughs> because anytime that we do anything for the wrong reason, you're going to get the wrong result. And you're not going to stay with it. Eventually, you'll leave it where it's standing. Next time they go across the water, you won't get on the ship. <laughs> but this start a movement. When you can get somebody to say, because everybody is seeking you, that's a movement. But only, only the power of the Lord of God can stir up this kind of movement. And look what he says, all right? In verse 38, and he said unto them, let us go into the next towns. No, he got S on it. That I may preach there also, for this is the reason that I came. I've served my purpose here. We done preached the word. We done laid hands on the sick. We done cast out devils. But now, you know, I, am, I came for, for the whole body and not just one particular place. See, this is the purpose why in starting a church, they leave behind people in places to continue the work. That's why you need churches everywhere. Amen? Amen? To set people aside they can continue to minister to his people. No, he can't minister to everybody. How many of you know that Jesus got baptized for all righteous sake, but Jesus never baptized one person? How many of you know that? Whose job was it? It was the church, the disciples, the people that he'd been called in. That was part of the work of the church ministry to do those things as well. So that was a movement here. And Jesus' response is here. He left after the movement got started. But you know what? Sometimes when the movement is right, the movement will continue to follow you. Or the reputation behind what had happened did. So that is the next part. We see the Messiah. The second thing is we see the movement. And the third thing I want to show us is the man. And again, everybody say us. But it's us right here. We are going to be symbolic of the leper. And when he got to the next time, see, that's important. That leper had no idea what was going on there, but when he got there, it was important. If Jesus never had said the statement in 38 and 39, the leper was still but a leper. But look at verse 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion and forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be thou clean. Look at the leper's boldness. He risked his life and he came to Jesus before the crowd could even stone him. Because understand it, that was part of the Old Testament Levitical law was the fact that lepers had stay outside of the camp. They risked being stoned to death. Anytime a leper came inside the camp, Anyone had the right and the authority to stone them to death because that was the law. So for him to come to Jesus like this, he was risking everything. What he was making right here, a life or death situation. Decision. How many of us have thought back some time and look at some of the major decisions we had to make and understood that those were life or death decisions? This decision that I am making today is going to impact and change the rest of my life. And this is the kind that he was making. And I'm not making this all super script. It wasn't law. They could have stoned him today. It was not like, you know, he saw him coming in with that cat and all. He made a step of faith that many people would not make for the fear of being killed. Amen? Amen. 
And Jesus moved. What was it? What's the place here? Yeah. What was the first thing he did when he got there? He beseeched him, then he saw it. He kneeled down to him. So the first thing that he did was what? He worshiped. Jesus risking being stoned to death, but he did risk. One of the, one of the toughest complacents for the, for, the, for the rest of this church that we are right now in the 21st century, for the church and the world as a whole, is the very fact that now there's always, we have been created to be in community. So we were never created to be alone. All this isolation that we have to deal with right now, this was never the plan of God. We want, that's not in our DNA to be that way. So there's always going to be a need to be touched. I mean, you know, everybody, I don't care how hard you might think you is, I don't need nobody. I'm like, that's a lie. That's everybody. We were designed to need and want friendship, companionship, fellowship, all of those things to dwell in community. Just like this number. Why did he risk coming? He went back into society. He want to get back to normal with his family, his friends, and all of that. It's the same way for the, but yet, just like him, we have the same thing today. But yet, even though we desire to be touched, but yet there's still a fear of being touched. Come on, look at us. We got masks. We sit five feet apart, and, you know, we doing this, and we doing all of that. It's that so it's a reality. But we don't know how times change we have to go through with certain seasons we got to endure. I do believe this is going to pass one day. But right now, we're in the midst of the season, and we got to deal with it Amen. in the right way, in the right perspective. But this person here, you know, that was a tough decision that he had to make as well. But he made it. But I love it. The first thing, that he, even before he asked, he fell down to worship. Now, you know that back then, he, he took enough time, even though his life was on the line, he still took enough time to kneel and to worship. That's saying something, isn't it? And I thought about that. I said, you know, sometimes, why is it so hard for us just to kneel and worship? We would think that the easiest part of our relationship with God is to worship. To pray and praise should be so easy. He made it so easy for us to do it. Jesus gave us access to the Father. We can't pray no more holy, holy, no more finding no priest. I can go to him straight for myself. And then he's supplying us with his goodness every day. You want someone to praise me for? Look at what I just did. Just start counting and keep counting. <laughs> you know, and praise me for every number. Because he's always doing certain things for us. But he made me look at myself. I said, man, this, this leper would kneel down. You know, if I'm going up there, I'd be like, shh, gee, you know, I'm looking around. You know, but he took time. He didn't even pay the danger no attention. Now, I'm not saying that God had be something foolish. But the fact that the high prioritize his praise. Now, I'm not just talking about you ain't got to be at church to praise and worship God. He do it at home. Matter of fact, most of our what we do at what we do at home is really gonna reflect on what we do in public. How many of you believe that? You know, if you ain't praying in private, you too many people praying in public. Or praise or whatever, you know. But but it, it, what it, what it, this did, it made me take inventory on myself. God, the most dangerous part in this person's life I means the time to worship God. Wow. Man, I want I want that kind of Christianity. You know. That in fact, I'm, I'm going to do that. Look at his faith, his belief. Then what do we say? Lord, I know you are able. What are we looking for today? Praise to you are able. There's no doubt that you can't do this, but here's what I'm asking you is, Lord, but will you remember me? Will you deliver me? He didn't ask him to touch to deliver me. Jesus had did it so many times before. He had a reputation. Remember the centurion soldier servant. He didn't even go to his house. He spoke the word. And his, and, his, and his servant was healed. When he got back home, it was all over. So Jesus don't have the touch to heal, but this particular person. Why? For one thing, he could have touched a leper. Well, what a what a testimony this is going to do for some of those that are standing around and we're to see what he do. It's going to mess up a whole lot of people's theology right here when he began to touch them. But this man, he showed his faith. And just didn't speak his faith. 
It's easy to talk faith, but it's a whole different ball game to walk in faith. Amen? I, can, I will do it. I'm going to do it. I'm on my way to do it, but I ain't getting it yet, but I'm going to do it. When are we going to do it? He showed his faith that he did that. The fourth thing, we see the Messiah, we see the movement, we see the man. That's, that's us. We're symbolic of this leper. But now let's get to the heart of, let's look at the mirror. Verse 41. And Jesus moved with compassion and put forth his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be thou clean. Man, can Jesus accept a better response to a request? I'm willing to do it. Jesus had compassion, not just sympathy. He was moved to do something, not just be a song. That separates the Messiah from a lot of us. Oh, we, a lot of times we have sympathy for people in situations, but we don't do that. But when we have compassion, right, this kind that you said, it will move me to an action, won't it? Man, I'm so, I hate y'all. I've been in the house of your family. Y'all ain't got nothing to eat. I'm real sorry for you. Y'all remember that story I tell you about the, about the older lady who went to, took the food to a cup. She had more groceries than I did. I'm sitting there like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Y'all ain't got nothing to eat. But I won't give you nothing. I won't grow you. you know, I'll, even if you're lazy now, take it out. Of it. If you know I'm hungry, you don't feel like even taking it. You, now you can call on your phone and have some folk deliver it to me. You can pay folks to make up for your laziness. <laughs> I don't feel like one out in the rain, but call Kroger or whoever, they'll take it over there. <laughs> Just give me your address and wait on the Lord. I speak to you. Something divine going to happen now. You ain't got to get out there in the cold now. Boy, that doesn't mean there ain't no excuse in it. He's blessing me right now. Oh, right now. But why are we blessed? To be a blessing. To someone else. Because sometimes that can stop the miracle right there, stingy or something. But, <clears throat> but Jesus had compassion. That's the first part of, of the three important parts to this video. The first thing, he had compassion. And then number two, he touched the leper. We see this in verse 40, I'm sorry, verse 41. And he touched him and he said, I will be thou clean. He touched the leper. There's again, that's that theology problem. The law said touching an unclean person will make the clean person unclean. This is a good place to say, but God. See, man's law does not dictate the law of God. You know, we can't put him in a box like that. This, again, what separates the Messiah's touch from anyone else's touch. Yeah, in, 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 in real life, when it, people with, with, with leprosy and all of that, if someone touched someone with leprosy, there is a chance. That that person might get it. They will, they will not fact, They will be declared unclean. But we're not talking about us now. We're talking about the Messiah. You know, he touched him. And that is what makes the touch of the Messiah different than ours. Jesus touches to impart something, not to pick up something. He has the anointing. He's, he's Lord. He's over all of that stuff. But yet and still, we still have to obey the laws and all of that. But my point is, it's not talking about the, you know, the man's touch that changes everything. We're talking about Jesus Christ. The Messiah. My, the, 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 the wisdom behind this message is to get us to the place that we got to learn to look past man for everything. Don't bring Jesus down to man's level because he can't do he can't endure, he can't fight, he can't stand and try to bring him down to our level because we can't. Amen. This is what makes his touch so much different. And it blew their mind because this was the theology that they were born by then. We touch to receive something. Elder brought another point that later with the issue of blood. Why does she press her weight through the crowd and all of that? She touched him. As soon as she touched his hip, we go, what did Jesus say? Who touch you? I feel virtue leave my body. Again, you know, but he touches the virtue goes to someone else. Just like this leper that he took right here. 
Sometimes God touches through our touch, the laying on of hands, that's the spirit that was a function of part of the church as well. But the third part of this is Jesus spoke it and he said, I will be thou clean. As soon as God said, I will, it is done, faith is sealed. Amen? We have no doubt that he'll do it. When he speaks to us this way, when we get this kind of blessed assurance of God, he said, I will. You notice he didn't give no theology question. Are you saved? When the last time you been to church? You know, you know, all this kind of stuff. What did you know? He didn't ask that man nothing about anything. He didn't even ask him, how did you get leprosy? What that got to do with it? But that's the mentality of us. His faith that he risked his life to come and ask for a healing. That's all Jesus needed right there. What has God spoken over your life that unbelief has held up from coming? When he says, I will do, go, the word says, do this or do that, because of my lack of belief, it will hinder God from doing it. The reason he couldn't heal off everyone that came to him that was sick, here, everyone that came to him that was possessed with them. You know, there was something going on in that life. He wasn't able to do it. Just like this whole town. He couldn't heal many because of unbelief. We have to believe. Many times Jesus would say, do you believe that I am able to do this? According to your faith, be it unto you. But they encourage us that what God has spoken, his promises, those things will come to What has God, this is, a, this is a question that I've spoken over our life, that unbelief has held up from coming. There could be things that the only reason that they have not happened is because I don't believe on the level of the request that I'm making. If the leper did not believe that Jesus could deliver him, his faith would allow him to receive the blessing that he did. But he told him, I know that you're able. There's no doubt about that. The question is, and I have a faith in you that you can do it, but the question is, will you? I'm asking, will you deliver me? Well, Pastor, how do you know all that? <laughs> Look at verse 42. As soon as he had spoken, what happened? My Bible said immediately. I don't know what you're trying to do. It's a quick word. Mine says immediately the leprosy departed from him and he was what? Clean. That was the miracle. Immediately. Because he had the faith and supply. It was his moment. It was his time that he came and he was delivered. I believe today the people that God wants to say, I will to us today. But we got to supply the faith. To believe God. Amen? Or according to your faith, believe it into you. I'm not talking about how we used to play with the days of uh, she loved me, she loved me not. She loved me, she loved me not. Will he do what he will do? Will he do what he won't do it? Can he do it? Maybe he can do it. No, we got to have a fully assurance of faith that he can do this so much that I'm willing to risk my life because of his word outstanding. And the fifth thing here. Is the mandate that comes behind. There's always going to be a mandate behind every miracle. And we'll see this here in verses 43 and 44. And look what he said. And straightly he charged him and forth and sent him away. And he said, See that thou say nothing to any man, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, offer for my cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. That was the mandate. Every miracle comes with a charge or a command. You got to believe that. There's an accountability part. There's always a part. Jesus might perform the miracle, but that's the thing we're going to do before and after the miracle has been performed. His case here was he gave the man, not the leper. I hope you got that. The mandate was to the man, not the leper. Why? Because at this point, he was no longer a leper. Some of us, we're so bad about, well, I 
I'm just a sinner saved by great duty battles. <laughs> if you saved by grace, then you need to raise sinner. He gave the man, not the leper. If the leprosy immediately, one thing about leprosy, it was a physical that you can see it real good. It ain't like it's something on the inside, you gotta go get, get figured out. It's gone. And it says immediately it left him. So that was already immediately evidence that it was gone. I ain't gotta pray about it. Is it there? I don't see it. That lets me know that it, it is gone. Now, let's, let's look, look at the mandate. Y'all tell me what the, the leper, he had good faith, but he didn't just follow good directions right here. <laughs> the first thing in the mandate, what did he do? He tell him, don't tell anyone along the way. So I said, well, no, Jesus, he been a leper, this, but see, but Jesus was, Jesus had a point, he had a purpose here. He wanted him to immediately go straight to the priest because during the Old Testament, uh, leprosy law in Leviticus 14, you know, only the priest can declare you clean. I don't care what your mama said, your dad, and I'm not, it, well, it ain't only what you still got to go to the priest. They had a process that he took you through. They didn't want to declare you clean. They would not accept it was gone, even though they didn't see it. And Jesus knew that. Just go that straight. When you get back from the priest, you can go to the mountaintop and shop. But I got a plan for you right now. Just go. What are stay focused? Don't get distracted. Distractions. I know, man, but gee, well, I can't wait to tell it. But right now, I want you to go. Don't tell any man right now, but go where? To your way. And you still know Jesus was serious because in this translation, it says that he uh, strictly uh, commanded him. I'm sure each one of our has got some kind of word that Jesus meant business. He wasn't playing around. I want you to go there. Don't do that. Look, go, go, go straight to point A and do like I told you to do. Show yourself to the priest. Let Again, let him be the witness of my power. The priest going to come and say, well, hold it now. How did you get delivered from the leprosy? I have not did one of the things Leviticus 14 said. Go for it. And tonight, read Leviticus 14. Yeah, 14 chapter. And notice all I had to go through before you can be declared clean. And everything. So Jesus was still understanding the people that's going to witness this are still stuck in the Old Testament law, but I want you to do everything according to the law. That they can't deny that I did not cleanse you from the leprosy. They would give me the glory when you when they, when they can see after the priest say you've been clean and everybody else is going to believe with you. He told them to bring an offering for the sacrifice. There was certain things they had to take to the priest. To go through that process. They had to do a lot of time in sacrifice. It caused financial stuff. You just couldn't just get anything to be used. You had to be the right animal, the right cleanliness, had to be holy and all that stuff. So it cost to do something. But the testimony of God working through Jesus, every miracle of blessing requires something from us. How many of you believe that? Amen. I know it's not on TV, like all you gotta do is just come. But you gotta come with something. You gotta come believe, you gotta come with faith. I'm willing mind that you want to obey. If God tells me to stop doing something, then I can be delivered from something. I must stop doing what I need what needs to be done. Come on, how many y'all to what? For the sake of our guess what? Liberty. Obedience is what? It's non-negotiable. There's no way you can negotiate out of obedience with God for nothing. Every miracle. We don't give for a healing, but we give because we are healed. I'm not buying a healing. I know some people, well, you got to sow a seed before you can get the healing. Well, it, well this dude got his healing before he, he, he His seed is being sown afterwards. So, you know, we have to watch our theology. Don't put God in a box of man. It is a mandate. The three mandates reveal and prove the power of God's touch through Jesus Christ. Now, we've seen the Messiah, we've seen the movement, the man, the miracle, and the mandate, and the last thing that flows out is, is the message that flows out. Look at verse 45. And he went out and began to publish it. Bless God, I, I don't know, I might have to say something to somebody. You know, 
I ain't back, I'm not being hard on it, but I'm just saying, I know Jesus' intent behind it. It would be hard for me to hold I've been a leopard all this time. Now I'm clean, and y'all been picking at me, throwing at me, laughing at me when I walk around here with them leprosy clothes on, holler, I'm clean, I'm clean. I ain't clean, I'm not unclean no more. I'll holler at too. Yeah. And you will too. I know that would be a hard one to keep. Yeah. But I understand Jesus' purpose behind it. And notice what he said. He punished it as much. He may he didn't shut up. And to blaze abroad the matter in so much that Jesus could not more openly enter into the city. He didn't get Jesus' time to get. Once he started doing that, everybody, again, another movement started off the message of this one leper. At one time, nobody would listen to the leper. Everybody laughing at the leper, picking at the leper. But now, they want to run and find out. Now, if that, if that Jesus can heal you a leprosy, See, sometimes our miracle, our blessing can get somebody to the altar, but eventually they want to believe. You know, after that miracle, that was your miracle, but now they want a miracle. You're not going to stop accepting Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That, that's going to, that is, that's going to be a mandate in that too. To get the blessings of God, we're going to be, we're going to be accepting the Son. Oh, Lord, yeah, I want to heal him, but I, I want to heal him, but I want to heal him. Come on, that really, that, that, that's, you know that's not even, that don't make sense at all. But the Messiah, his message was the Messiah touched me. He made me whole physically and spiritually. Come see the man. Jesus saved. Jesus healed. Jesus delivered. How many of you know that the power of our testimony is the most powerful thing that we have? That's why Psalm 107, 107, 107 verse 2, he says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If you've been delivered from the hands of the enemy, we ought to say so. We ought to tell somebody, this is how. This is what happened. This is the one that did it. You know, let them know. I don't, I don't know all the scriptures. I can't quote them all, but I can tell you what. I know I've been doing this. I can tell you my testimony. I don't need to quote no scripture to tell you how he healed me right here. I live that. I don't have to memorize it. This is my testimony. And I can tell it, I'll never forget my testimony. But because of this man telling his testimony, others were told, and it caused a traffic jam in the city. And it can happen for you and I today. And I challenge all of us, if the Messiah's touch that changes everything, when he changes, he ain't telling us, don't tell nobody. For us, let the redeemed of the Lord say something. Tell somebody what the Lord has done. Don't hold it. Be like this man. Everybody you see, let me tell you what the Lord did for me. You know, tell it, tell it, tell it. The cross, it is a testimony of the church. Again, we are all like lepers, clean by the touch of the Messiah's hand that made me whole. Salvation is proof that I've been made. I cannot have a sickness. I cannot have a demonic spirit in me. But I am not whole if I have not accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I might have it going on, living large, all that kind of stuff. But I cannot say that I am whole if I am not whole, mind, body, and spirit. I have not accepted there's still something missing in my life. And the greatest touch is him entering into our heart. As Lord and as Savior. There is nothing, I want to close with this. There is nothing in our life that cannot be touched by God. So I challenge you if there's any area, the Messiah's touch can change everything. But here's the key just like this leper, Jesus came to the city, but the leper came to him. You gotta do the same thing. You gotta agree and forget about what everybody's saying or thinking they're gonna say about you. You know, just like the leper came to Jesus. We have to come to Jesus. And the Messiah's touch can't change. I'm gonna tell you, how can you believe that? For a long time in my life, I had everybody else touching everything. Too many footprint, uh, footprint, fingerprints. On certain parts of my life, the only should have been fingerprints of God on, and therefore it didn't work. But 
when I allow him the master's touch, the Messiah's touch, anybody need to be made whole by the touch that make all the difference today. There is no touch like the master's, the Messiah's touch. There's an old hymn that says he touched me. I know that it's really going to be some of y'all minds here today. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. Oh, the joy that floods my soul because he touched me. And it says something happened. And now I, but come on, we know it. But I know he touched me and he made me whole. But that wholeness got to start with salvation. Amen? So the question is, what was your something that happened in your life? Or another way to look at this, do you want something to happen today? Immediately for the, the leper, because his faith made it immediate. Same thing can happen for us today. I can't guarantee you that we can pray and ask God to do something and immediately what happened today. That's out of my jurisdiction. But I do believe, and I'll tell you about if we just bring it to the Lord, allow him to touch it by giving it to him with our faith, I believe God will do something. Might not be now, he might need to test my faith. But I'd rather take it to the Lord than to take it to the devil. Amen? So we have a call today. It's a call for salvation. Again, not whole without being saved. Then there's a call for healing. Deliverance from all sickness and disease. A call for the provisions of life. If there's something you need or lack, he can touch that as well. A desire of our heart. That's part of our, that's part of our, our, our plan of to come with the benefit of plan of salvation. He will give us the desire. Amen. There are certain things we're commanded, but also there's some things that we desire that we can still bring it to him and he can do it. And the last call as we pray today, that can be a call for somebody. If you just want to intercede for somebody else, that's powerful within itself. One of the quickest ways to get your blessings is to pray for the blessings on someone else. And I believe that God can do that. We reap what we sow. The Messiah's touch. The touch that changes everything. I hope that you got something out of this that we can see the authority to help build your faith. We saw that he had authority over this and he called these men and they followed him. He had authority over demons. We've seen countless times how he cast out demons and everything. He had authority over disease. He healed a lot of them. And also he had authority in prayer. After all what Jesus was doing, what did he ran away from the people to pray? And that's where they found him at. On his knees. Praying. There is authority in prayer. We have access Amen? We can be empowered through our prayer. That also made me examine my prayer life. Jesus, get away from all these people. And he went to a place to pray. And that is my extension today. He touched me. If there's anyone that's standing in the need of any touch today, I'm going to ask you to stand where you are. Know, understand where we are at times and all that. Uh, Jesus touched him. We won't be laying hands and all that like, like we do. But I just want to pray. I want you to stand in faith. I want you to put yourself in that leper's place. Whether you you standing in need of a healing, you need provision, you need salvation. It was a desire of your heart, or you just want to stand in the gap with someone. I do believe that we can pray that the Messiah will touch that area or touch the life of the person we're interceding for. And I believe that it might not be immediate, but you know what? My faith can be immediate. I can wait on God. Amen. Can we do that? So whatever you stand, I'm going to pray, but I want you to pray as well. Amen. What did, the, what did the leper say? Lord, if thy will, I 
know you can do it. But will you do it? Father, here we stand today before you. We each are standing. Lord, we're standing in faith. We believe, God, that the need, the area, what's going on in my life, what I, where I need you to touch, I believe, God, that you're able to touch that in a change, a difference will happen. But my quick, my desire is, Father, will you do it? And as I pray, Saint, that's what I want you guys, God, will you do it? Ask him from the depths of your heart, will you do this? That your will be done in my life concerning this area. Touch as only you can, Father. Some stand in need of salvation. God, if we stand in faith for salvation, we're already saved before we even stand. The decision to come, you've already received us. God, we need a healing. We know, God, that we supply the faith that you can heal. There's nothing that you cannot do. There's nothing too hard for you. We don't have to understand it all, but we just understand that you are God. You are the Messiah. That your touch can change everything. I just got to touch you through my faith. Let my faith be so strong that like it be like the woman with the issue of blood. Even in the midst of a crowd, she touched him and it'll make you say, well, touch me. Lord, I want you to feel my touch today. Because it is me that is standing in the need of a blessing. I stand for provisions. There are needs that we have. Some are lacking. This pandemic has caused many to lose and have to make adjustments in lifestyle and in all those things. But God, I know that you'll supply our needs, but there's still the other provisions that we stand in need of. I have faith to believe before God that you will touch that area of my life. I know that you can do it. Desires of my heart, your promises, the things that you promise us that you can do. We know the scripture, you said you can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worked in us, God. Let our let that faith that we have in you be the power that you can do exceedingly abundantly. Do a miracle. It's a miracle that a leper could be touched by you and made clean and made whole. Father, I pray that I come in agreement with everybody's faith that's believing you according to your scripture. And for those that are standing in the gap for somebody else, what a great act of love. As they lift their person up before you, God, you know all about the situation in the person. But God, we lift them up before you today. All sickness, those that are wrestling with sickness and fighting against the devil, his wickedness and demons and all of that come up against us. Oh, we stand in need. We're standing in the need of your touch today, Lord. We want to be able to say, He touched me. And because He touched me, I've been made whole. My life has changed because of the touch of the Lord. God, we pray. Hear the cry of your people, Lord, as they cry out to you for the area that they need. Let their testimony be, he touched me. And they go out and tell the whole world and others will want to know about you. They might not run to the church, but Lord, let them run to you. I want to know more about that Messiah. I've watched you live in leprosy all this time, but now he has to deliver. Tell me more. How did this come to pass? And I do believe that we share the testimony of his touch, that they will seek after Jesus too. So God, I pray that today for all of us, each one of us are standing in the need of your touch. There's a place in our life that we need you to touch now. Like never before. This I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. I come in agreement with all that are praying today. This we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on, y'all, help me, come.
Kosa. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe that it is so. We believe that it is done. We're going to have the leper's faith. That God is able to do it. I just obey and have faith. I believe that leper, he was excited. He was talking about maybe finally made his way to the priest's house. And he did everything that God told him. That is why everybody can do it. Amen. How many of you believe that today? Yeah, come on. All right. So. You want to sing one um, verse of this song? He touched me. I've been doing that say, Let your faith, but ain't already done, let your faith. Believe that he's already touching. I know it's an old hymn, but it's true. Just one step. Just one now. That's all right. Just one step. One step. We ain't got to make this right. One step. Everybody know. I just want to put that in the atmosphere and I'll close it on today. You out there in Zoom, you know it too. Sing it. You feel it. You know how you not, you not have to be here for him to touch. Yes. Amen. He met this leper outside the church. Just one verse. Oh, that's why you <laughs> All right, yeah, Elder Dunn, can you hear it from back there? <laughs> I want to hear. I just want to. I just want those words in the house. Yeah. I hear him. Yes, just one line. Has 
not accepted Jesus Christ. We're talking to the ones even that are listening to us in Zoom. If you're out there, you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is a good thing to be touched by the hands of salvation. The main Jesus came. Remember when he first started, his first message was the clue. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. He came for salvation. Healing of this leper was nothing but a benefit of salvation. To get us to believe that we can heal a leper. My God, what sickness can he not heal? And if it messes up, he touched the leper. Throw your theology out the window. I'm God. I'm the Messiah. There's nothing too hard. I can't do all things. Just to get us to believe. And if you're out there, Seeking God for other things. I mean, he stressed so much on healing. He is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God that heals. I believe that. And it just blessed my heart to hear the testimony this morning, all the way from Mississippi, and how God is doing the same thing in Mother Bigby's life. Healing her, bringing her back, restoring her back. And there's a lot of us have those testimonies. Amen. So we ask you today. Come to the Lord. Wow. But the good news is, He can touch any time, any place, anywhere. Just not here in this moment. He can always be there to touch us when we need it the most. Amen? Amen. So I hope that something that I said will encourage us, especially this season, this time, what we're going through with in this nation, in this world. But we have God, and we have Jesus to trust. Even in the midst of heart, there's always going to be something. But I'm thankful. I'd rather go do with something with him than without him. Yeah. Amen. Can I get an amen on that? Yeah. Let us say again. We thank God again. Even in the midst of this moment, maybe God has touched the heart of someone. He may extend the invitation to come to him. But we also extend the invitation to be a part of his family, the church, the body of Christ. Just like uh, he called those disciples to come. He called them to be fishers of men. That is the responsibility of the church. We are called now that we can go out and be fishers of men, help lead other people to Christ by living right first and sharing the gospel, and being an example of his word and his blessing. And they will bring other people to Christ. There's no better gift I can offer to the Lord once I give myself is to help someone impact their life to give their life to the Lord as well. What a great gift to him, a soul, mine as well as someone else. So that is the church responsibility when it comes to what we, the work we do here on the earth. And if there might be one today, amen, we give that invitation as well to come. That being said, hey, if you like to learn from what you've heard today, Share this story with someone on next week. I challenge everybody, find these three people to share this message about the leper. You can, you can, you ain't gotta use the title of your whatever you want to use, but find three people and share what you got out of this message today. Amen. Amen. Let's see if it'll make a difference. I believe, just like with this leper. Amen. The Messiah's touch. How many of you? Come on, say amen one more time. Amen. His touch will change everything. Father, we thank you again for this day. I thank you for all the saints that are here. I speak blessings over the life of all, God, that you just continue, Lord, to touch us in every area that we need, that we have the faith to believe you for the touch and the heart to receive the blessing that comes from it. We thank you again, Lord. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise for all the things you have done. As we leave this place, let us go out and take something that the Holy Spirit has spoken into our life, and we can go out and share it with someone else. I speak your blessings, your shelter, your protection over us all, and it should be a fence around us as we go out in this world to do your will. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we give you praise for all the things that you have done. This we ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
And again, if you've been touched by the Lord, tell somebody, he touched me. Amen. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be accepted in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And also, we want to thank our Brother Marquise for filling in for Brother Rod today. Thank you. Amen. For blessing us on today. We really appreciate it. And he came at a moment's notice, and we're so thankful for that. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Open the door. I keep forgetting about the door. <laughs> and everybody that's still watching in Zoom, please watch the uh, rest of the uh, announcements that they come out and everything. And again, Liberty, please pray for our function on next Saturday as well. Be blessed. Whoa, I stepped in the water. The water was cold. Uh -huh. It cheered my body, uh -huh. but not my soul. Uh -huh. If you don't believe uh -huh. that I've been redeemed, uh -huh. just follow me down uh -huh. to the Jordan Stream. Uh -huh. See that Jordan River? Uh -huh. That Jordan River? Uh -huh. That Jordan River? Uh -huh. The Jordan River? That the water was cold. Uh -huh. That water was cold. Uh -huh. It cheered my body, uh -huh. but not my soul. Uh -huh. The Jordan River, uh -huh. the Jordan River, uh -huh. that Jordan River, uh -huh. that Jordan River. Uh -huh. Oh, I came to tell you what Jesus said. Jesus said, oh, I came to tell you what Jesus said.